God, we are praying for you just to do the miraculous. We're praying for you to work in our hearts. Um, God, break down any walls, any barriers that we have to hear from you. God, we love you. We thank you. And uh, we give you all the honor. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Well, it is so good to see you all. Um, as we start this brand new series and this new opportunity, we're excited about it. Um, I would ask that you would just be praying for our family. Uh, we lost our, our family dog last night, so it's been a sad night at the at the, the Spectre home. Um, and so we're we're working through it, but uh, but keep our little girls in a prayer. Speaking of prayer, I want to ask this question. How many of you honestly believe in the power of prayer? How many of you would say, I believe in the power of prayer? Amen. Amen. All right, here's the second question. How many of you, even though you believe in the power of prayer, believe that you could pray more consistently and more with faith? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think we all could. Um, why is it that even though we know as followers of Jesus, even though we know we, we have this faith, we believe that God can do so much, we know that God has the power to do things, that we have access to go boldly before the throne of grace, that God hears our prayers, that he is moved by our, uh, our faith, yet so often our prayer life um, can almost come up haphazard, it can almost come up inconsistent, it can almost come up faithless. And, and I think that there's a lot of different reasons why. I think that there's, um, a, I, I think that we truly do love and honor God, but, but we just feel like we, we're, we're just not really good prayers. And, and maybe you've been around somebody, like they are, they're, you kind of call them a professional prayer. Like they are just, they're on it. And anything that they say, God is probably like, wow, I, I didn't even see that one coming. Like this guy really knows what's going on. I'm going to answer all of their prayers. And you're around that, and you're like, man, I can't pray after that. Like, what am I gonna, what am I gonna pray for after that? They're they're really good, and and it's almost like there's this implied point system in prayer. Like, like we don't, we're not gonna talk about it out loud, but in our minds, we kind of think that there is a a point system, right? So if we're praying and somebody starts quoting a scripture, like they get extra points for that. <laughs> Right? I, you're praying, you're in the middle of prayer, and, and you've got that one person, God, you know. In Isaiah 54, it says that no weapon will form against us will prosper. And it's like, man, that guy just got some more points. Or maybe maybe you're praying, and, and you've got that one person that's, mm, Jesus. <laughs> right? You're praying, there's just that one person, mm, Jesus. You get extra points for, mm, Jesus. Like, it's just, it's just how, it, how it works. And in our minds, we think, man, I, I'm just not a good prayer. I, I, I can't quote scripture back to Jesus. I, I don't get any mm Jesuses. I don't get any mm Lord, yes, answer that. Right? And, and we think that there's this point system and that at the end of my time, like somehow I got in the negative. Like somehow when I got done praying, I'm, I'm at negative five. And you, know, you, you just feel like it's almost pointless. Like you're trying to, to pray, you're trying to talk, you're, you're, you want to have a relationship with Jesus, but it, it's just hard. It's hard to have those conversations. Then you have those people, and I'm just going to be honest, they, they, they almost intimidate you, right? They, they call you up, hey, let's, let's have a prayer meeting. Let's just pray for like an hour. And you're like, let's not. <laughs> now, right? Just a, here, here's just how a, a little insight to our family. Um, I love my parents. My parents are here. My sister's here with me this morning, and I just want to honor them. Thank you guys for being here. <laughs> love you guys. Um, but here's just a little insight to our family. It was Friday night. We were all on vacation. All the family was there, and, and they had the great idea. Hey, let's just let's just before we end our time together, we were all at the beach together, and, and we've got family that lives in Philadelphia, family that lives in Ohio. We live here in North Carolina. And, and, you know, they get the idea, let's just get everybody together, and we're just going to have a round of prayer. We're going to have a round of prayer. And Dad says, I'm going to start first. <laughs> we never got past point one. <laughs> 30, 35 minutes later, 
and world peace has been prayed for, <laughs> world hunger has been has ceased. <laughs> like every animal, every person, every inch of every drive was prayed for. And so when he got done praying, the next person in line, we just started laughing. <laughs> and we were we were done. We just we, it ended the prayer circle. There was just nothing else to pray for. But there's there's times. And, and I love it because I don't have that type of faith. I don't have that ability just to just to go before God and, and just open up and, and share everything that's on my mind. Um, but that's that's the fun things that we remember um, about prayer. And, and there's a lot of different things that 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 that, that, that causes us to struggle. Maybe we get in in a rut where things just start to become. Um, mundane for us. I, I think our prayers can become very safe, predictable, mundane, rope, and safe. God, uh, please bless this greasy burger that I'm fries that I'm about to eat. Like I, I don't, I don't know how He's going to change the, the molecular structure of that burger and bless that thing. Like it's just, I, I don't know. Um, God, help me find a good parking spot. And sometimes you wonder, an all-powerful, almighty God looks down and he's like, that, that's all you got for me? Like, I've got things up here that I want to bless you with. i got things up here that I want to, I want to help you. I, I have things up here that I want to, I want to show you. But, but your prayers are just too safe. They're just too safe. And so I'm excited to go through this series together. We're calling it Empowered Prayers. And the word empowered means this, to make someone or something stronger and more confident, to give uh, someone authority or power to do something. And so here's my hope over the next three weeks, is that you gain in your confidence and your ability to say, you know what, I'm going to make those, those prayers. I'm going to say those prayers, and I'm going to see what God's going to do. And I, and I truly believe with all my heart that, that if we would start empowering our prayers and God start empowering us with prayer um, that it begins to change the way that we live. It begins to change the way that we see life. It begins to change the, um, every, everything about us. And so my prayer is that over the next several weeks, man, we gain confidence and power in this and stronger in this area of prayer. And, and today we're going to look at um, Acts chapter 4 and, and here's what we're specifically looking, looking for. How, how do we pray with boldness? How do we pray with boldness? And so let me kind of give you the context. If you've got your scriptures, you can open up to them. Um, uh, it will be on, this, on the screen as well. But Acts chapter 4 says this. To you, uh, to, to the context, Peter and John were preaching with great faith um, about the death and the resurrection of, G, uh, of Jesus. While they were preaching, um, they were doing miracles for different people. There was a guy who uh, couldn't walk for 40 years, and, and now he's walking. And so they're performing miracles. They pray for him. God is miraculously healing people. Um, the, the temple guards, the, the captain of uh, the Sadducees, the captain of the temple guards, the religious leaders, um, they thought that this was going to be a problem. Uh, Peter and John are, are sharing this message of Jesus Boldly, and, and, and God is doing amazing things. People are coming to know Jesus as their, as their Lord and Savior. Um, miracles are happening. God is moving in power. And the religious leaders are sitting back and they're saying, we've got a problem. We've got a problem. They, they think that it's some kind of cultish movement. And so the leaders arrested Peter and John. And they're in prison. And they're put on trial. The next day, they would go before the Sanhedrin, and what they would do is kind of, they'd be surrounded by them in a circle, and they would just be asking them questions, questions on um, whose authority are you performing these miracles on? Whose authority are you teaching about Jesus, and what message are you preaching? And here's what Peter says. He responds in Acts chapter 4, verse 10. He says something incredibly bold. He says this, let me clearly state to all of you and all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth. So you can already imagine that, that Peter brings up the name of Jesus. Now just remember, it was only a few short um, uh, days earlier, Jesus was crucified. There was a, a huge gathering there. I mean, everything was going on. 
And he stands up in, in, in amongst them and he says this. He says, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. And how bold is that to be like, hey, this person was healed because of the powerful name of Jesus. Remember that guy? Yeah, you crucified him. You guys are the ones that are responsible for his death. But don't worry. God raised him from the dead. Now, this would this is such a bold statement, and here's why. Because the Sadducees, the religious leaders, they didn't believe in a bodily resurrection. And, and so what, G, what Peter is doing is, is he's really trying to pick a fight. And he's letting them know, hey, Jesus is the one. The, the power of Jesus is the person that healed this man. You crucified him, and God raised him from the dead. That's incredibly incredibly bold. Look what happens, verse 13. Because of his boldness, the members of the council were amazed. The, the, the members of the council were amazed. They were taken back. They were blown away when they, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they, could, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scripture. I mean, I'm not, these guys were the elite of the elite. These guys were the top tier of uh, religious leaders. And, and they're listening to Peter and John, and they're, like, and they're amazed. And, and here's what they're amazed by. What they're saying about Jesus, what they're teaching about Jesus. He says, I see that you guys are just ordinary men. In, in the Greek, that word is idiotes. It's unschooled. It's ordinary. It's no special value. Guess what English word we get from idiotes? Oh, yes. Idiot! Like that's the that's the English <laughs> translation. It, these guys are, are are talking in the power and in, in the presence of Jesus, and they're talking with such boldness that the that the council of the religious leaders are like, man, there's something different about these guys because we know that they're fishermen, we know that they're uneducated, we know that they're unschooled. We know that they're idiots, but they have some incredible faith. A bold faith in their relationship with Jesus. So, so suddenly there's a, a problem. The religious leaders are, are looking on. And, and they've got this guy who, right before he couldn't walk, and 40 for 40 years, and now all of a sudden this miracle takes place. And he's walking. They can't deny that. But they're afraid of Peter and John. And they're afraid that this movement, that this Jesus movement would take over. And so they've got to shut it down. And so they threaten them. Don't ever preach these miracles. Stop or, or preach about Jesus. Stop doing these miracles and however you're doing them. If you talk about Jesus, we will arrest you. We will beat you. You will be executed. We will, you will physically pay a price if you continue in this way. And so what do you think Peter and John did? I mean, they are, they're getting threats on their life to be physically beaten and tortured and possibly lose their life. And what do they do? They pray. They pray. That, that, and, and, and it wasn't just one of those um, they, they didn't pray safe they, they didn't pray God just, just deliver us from this they didn't pray God keep us safe God help us from the bad people God let us at least just keep our jobs because we've got a good 401k going God let us just be happily married and, 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 and left alone God, I just want to go to church. I just want to listen to my Christian music. And I just want to do my, my, my Christian thing. And I just, I just want to be comfortable. That, that's not what they prayed for. Uh, they didn't pray for any of that. But instead, they prayed with the threat of death. A very dangerous prayer. Because following Jesus was never meant to be saved. And, and I want you to, 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 to show you this prayer. And here's my... Here's my prayer for, for us this week, that we start repeating and, and praying this prayer with them, that, that this becomes our prayer as a, as a church. And this is what I'm praying for you 
for this week. And it's in verse 29, and it says this. And now, O Lord, hear their threats. In, in other words, God, you know their plan to, to beat us, to kill us. Um, you, you heard the threats. Now watch this bold prayer. And give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. God, give us, give us your boldness. God, make me bold. Make me bold. Like that was their prayer. God, I know that life is going to get difficult for us. I know that if we continue to follow you, that, that there's a possibility we can be beaten, we can be uh, we can be killed, we can be murdered for our faith. But God, give us boldness to keep doing what you have us to do. Give us this unshakable spiritual convictions that we have the courage and the faith to obey you no matter what the personal cause may be. God, even if it's painful, give us boldness. And all the religious leaders were amazed. They were amazed. Question for you. <laughs> for those of you that are followers of Jesus, let me ask this question. How amazed are the people by your boldness? Like just, just if you were to put it on a, a scale of one to 10, a one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, how amazed are people by your boldness? And, and some of you might be on it are, are modest with yourselves and you, you might say, man, I'm, I'm like a, a six or a seven. Um, and, and maybe the truth is you're, you're like an eight or a nine or a 10. But because everyone everywhere knows where you stand, that they know that you've been transformed by the grace of Jesus Christ and, and you, you have spiritual fruit in all that you do, right? Sometimes when you speak up publicly, you don't even have to speak because the presence, your presence alone just speaks and, and it oozes the goodness and the greatness of God where everyone knows, hey, you are a, a committed follower of Jesus. Whether they agree with you or not, they know that you are a follower of Jesus. And you might say, hey, I might be an eight or a nine. Others, if you're honest, you say, man, I'm a Christian, but I don't, I just don't talk about it. I might be like a two or a three. I might be on the on the lower end of the, of the spectrum, right? You might be working with people for three or four years and, and somehow they hear over, over a conversation that you're a follower of Jesus and they're like, what? I didn't. I never even knew that you knew who Jesus was, and that you were a follower of Jesus. And when they drill down in that, what, 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 what we find out is that they didn't really see any evidence in our life. They didn't see any fruit in our life that that we are a disciple of the one who gave his life for us. How amazed are others? Are, are, are people amazed by your boldness? Right. Look back at the passage. I want to look at the, the, the very bold prayer that he said. And, and he says, oh Lord, you know, hear our threats. Give us, give us your own power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And then look what happened. After this prayer, what happened? The meeting place shook, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And then what did they do? Then they preached the word of God with what? With boldness. Right? Here's what I love. It was after they prayed. They're seeking God's help. God, make us bold. After they pray, they're filled with the Spirit of God, and they go out and they continue to preach the Word of God boldly. Now, here's always the hesitation. Well, I'm, I'm a timid person. I'm not a, a very out, outgoing person. I'm, a, I'm more quiet. I'm more reserved. I'm more laid back. And, and I understand all that. Um, I, I don't like to be public with my faith. But here's the thing. 
Boldness is not a personality trait. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you may be naturally quiet, but filled with the Spirit of God, you have spiritual courage and boldness that comes from the Spirit of God. And, and, and so boldness is not a, a personality trait. It's actually the work of the Spirit of God working in your life. Now, here's what I love about this. They prayed, the Holy Spirit came, and they preached with boldness. That they preached and the Holy Spirit came upon them. They preached with boldness. Now here's the, be very careful. If you pray this empowering prayer, if you pray, God, make me bold, you may see opportunity to be bold in ways that you've never seen before. That God may put you in circumstances where he is encouraging you and, and opening up opportunities for you to be bold in your faith. You may be in just a conversation with someone. And then all of a sudden there's, there's this urge from God. Hey, why don't you pray with this person? And you might not even be comfortable praying out loud. But, but because you've been praying, God, make me bold. You see opportunities like this. And God gives you opportunities where, where he gives you the opportunity to, to step into that boldness. Maybe you're meeting and someone says something inappropriate. And you very lovingly and appropriately say, hey, let's not, let's not go there. Right? You, you stand in and you, and you step up and you be bold. Or, or you might be bold when, when, when someone else is gossiping against someone and, and trash talking. You just don't participate or you walk away. And, and we step into boldness and say, hey, we're, we're better than that. And we step in that way. It, it might be um, we, we, we're bold about dressing modestly in a culture where everyone else um, does anything but dress modestly. You might see somebody hurting, and, and you might say, hey, in, instead I'm not inviting you to church, I'm bringing you to church. On Sunday, I'm coming to your house, I'm going to get you, I'm going to pick you up, and we are going to church together. Like, I don't know what it is, but God might be preparing you for something. That when you say, God, make me bold, there's going to be an opportunity. And today, later this week, at some point, to step into something that God has for your life. God, make me bold. And the Holy Spirit takes over. There's so many different ways that God might manifest himself and the power of the Spirit of God to give you courage to pray make me bold and so what would happen if every day this week you set an alarm on your phone before you step into into the classroom before you step into work before you um, go wherever it is that you're going or whatever it is that you do and you just take a moment god before i step in here god make me bold make me bold peter and john in the midst of this very possible persecution, kept on preaching Jesus. They kept on watching and seeing God do miraculous things in their life. And people continued to get saved. And so the high priest and the religious leader says this, we've got to stop this. And this happens in Acts chapter 5, verse 18. And here's what happened. They arrested the apostle and put them in a public jail. But an angel of the Lord came, to, came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. Then the angel told them, go to the temple and give the people this message of life. But what is he saying? Hey, get back at it. Get back at it. Don't stop. Now, now if someone just arrested you, what would be the last thing that you'd want to do? Get back at it. Go back into that situation. But what does God tell him to do? Keep going. Keep going. And so here's the thing. If we're daring enough, if you take me up on the challenge and say, you know what? For this week, I'm going to pray that. God, make me bold. 
make me bold. Before I, when I get up, before I leave my house, but when I'm with the kids, we're going to be praying, God, make us bold. That from this passage in Acts chapter 5, I want to show you three things that are attributes of, uh, attributes of boldness. And, and I promise you, you'll see them. Here's the first one. This is not the fun one. Number one is this. Boldness almost always triggers spiritual opposition. Almost always. Right? When we go back to the passage in, in, in Acts chapter 5, verse 18, what happened? Peter and John, they continue to preach Jesus boldly. Jesus is risen from the dead. Verse 18, what happened? They arrested the apostles and they put them in public jail. This is the second time this week that they've been in jail. This is their second time. And a lot of times... Uh, people say, well, I'm trying to live for Jesus and, and things just aren't going right. <laughs> Let me just be honest. Serving Jesus is not the formula for everything to go perfect in your life. A lot of times when you step out in faith and you step out and say, God, make me bold. It, it, it almost seems like the opposite. The, the moment that you start being faithful it is the moment that you start feeling the op spiritual opposition. In fact, we've said it like this before, and I, I know I've shared it with you before. I don't worry when there's opposition in my obedience. I worry when there's none. And I wonder if I'm being obedient. So I promise you, if you pray, make me bold. The Spirit of God comes upon you. And you start seeing yourself, finding yourself, standing up in the power of God and in the name of Jesus in ways that may not go well for you. People may make fun of you. People may laugh at you. People may talk behind your back. You may not get <coughs> invited to the parties. You may get passed over for the promotion. Uh, they, they may not let their kids hang out with your kids. There's going to be spiritual opposition. And the bottom line is this. If you're not ready to face the opposition for your obedience to God, then oftentimes we're not ready to be used by God. But when, when we're not ready, if, if we're afraid to pray, make me bold, because God may put some opportunities in your life, and you may, you may sense the spiritual opposition in your life because God is, is, is pushing you out of your comfort zone, man, it is a risky prayer. But it is an empowering prayer. It will change everything that you do. And boldness often triggers spiritual opposition. Here's the next thing we learned from this passage. And this one's awesome. Boldness often releases God's miracles. Boldness often releases God's miracle. When, when you live with a bold faith, um, you'll, you'll often see the hand of God move in miraculous ways around you. Uh, I, I want you to look, look at the verse back in verse 19, chapter five, uh, chapter 5, verse 19. Peter and John, they're in prison the second time. Luke is reporting all of this, and here's what Luke says. The way he says it, it makes me it makes me snicker. He says this, but an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. No exclamation mark. No, you're not gonna believe what happened next. Not, nothing like, and the most amazing thing that happened I've ever seen. Nothing like, hey. Hey, look at what, look at this. Uh, nothing like, um, you know, the angel was 10 feet tall and he had blazing eyes and he had a, a sword coming out of it. Like there was nothing. An angel showed up and, and Luke records it. An angel showed up. Listen, if an angel ever showed up, someone please take a picture. <laughs> I'd love to put that on my profile. Hashtag angel wings. Like, if an angel shows up, someone's talking about it. This is amazing. But what does Luke say? He's 
He says they're praying, they're preaching, they're in prison. The angel shows up and opens the gates. And otherwise, when you're walking in obedience to, to God, don't be surprised when God does miracles. But like when you're obeying God and you're doing what God has called you to do, don't be surprised when God shows up. I think so often we're like, oh man, I can't believe God did that. Why? If we're living in obedience, we should expect to see miracles happen. But we should expect God to show up. But we, we shouldn't be so surprised when, when, God, when God does something miraculous in our life. And, and Luke just records it like that. He says, hey, they were being obedient. They were put in jail. And the angel came and he let them out. <laughs> and they just went on going. And they just kept going. See, when we start living out our faith, we start noticing the miracles of God more often. Uh, we start seeing God do and release his miracles all around us. And, and so when, when we see miracles, it's like, yeah, well, I expected God to work. I, I prayed for that. God, give me boldness, and, and you showed up. Why, why, why should we be surprised when God does miracles? He's God. And we pray. And God hears those empowered prayers that we have. And so you may, it may look differently for each of us. Right? This may show up for you when, when all of a sudden you who, who hate speaking or, or praying publicly, man, God just lays it on your heart and, and, and you pray with somebody who's going through something and God shows up. It, it may, be, may be when somebody asks you a question on your faith and, and, and you don't remember the verse, but all of a sudden God reminds you of that verse and, and you're like, I don't, I don't even know where that came from. I love those times when, when God just gives me the, the right words to say or the right scripture to say in, in the moment that I say, and I, don't, I wasn't prepared, I wasn't ready, I didn't try to... No, it was, it was God speaking through us. Bold obedience often triggers the faithfulness and the miraculous power of God. Bold obedience often triggers the faithfulness and the miraculous power of God. God, make me bold. And then be ready for God to do miracles in your life. And then here's the last one from that passage. Third one is this. Boldness always requires faith. Boldness always requires faith. And, and, and so you may pray this week, God, make me bold. And I promise you, that when you live by faith, God, God, will, God will show up. Look at what the angel says to Peter and John. He opens the gates and then he says this, go to the temple and give the people the message of life. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple as they were told and immediately began teaching how much faith do you think it takes to be obedient to God after you were just in prison twice now twice see sometimes God will ask us something to go back to the place that we were just that we were just persecuted at and he says hey you know what I want you to keep preaching I want you to keep teaching I want you to keep praying. I want your life to keep showing. Why? Because it requires faith. It's always going to take faith to keep going. And God, make me bold. Watch the Spirit, how it prompts you to do something and take a, a step of faith. And when you pray, make me bold, it, it may be later on that day that God is having you stand up for him 
or, or step in when someone else steps out or, or to show generous, uh, generous expression of love in a way that might not always be comfortable for us. God is, is calling us and setting into motion a single act of obedience by faith. Now here's the great news. Peter and John were bold, mega bold in their faith. And they served Jesus faithfully to the day they died. You know how God rewarded them and blessed them in their life? Right? Let me tell you about it. Peter ended up marrying his high school sweetheart. They got married. John met this really pretty girl online, and they fell equally in love. <laughs> they had the perfect weddings at the Jerusalem Chapel, Instagram-worthy pictures. Peter took his bride to Jamaica, and John took her to Bahamas. And because they were best friends when they got back from the, uh, the honeymoons, they were riding the wave of the, uh, of the resurrection and the miraculous healings of God, so they started a consulting business together. And it beyond, went wild beyond the expectation. They made a lot of money. They lived a very comfortable life in their early 50s. They sold their business. They retired in the mountains and they raised their grandkids and they lived happily ever after. That would be awesome. But that wasn't, that wasn't what, they, what they got. Because here's what we find out. Whenever you're boldly obedient to Jesus, your life doesn't always get easier, does it? Here's, here's what really happened in Peter and John. Contemporary historians tell us that John was arrested. He was dipped in boiling oil. Uh, it was designed to kill him. And, and because it didn't kill him, what they ended up doing was they tortured him and they exiled him and they excommunicated from him to an island of Patmos where he would spend the rest of his life alone and die. Peter, we know that according to first century sources that Peter was martyred in Rome. And tradition tells us that they were going to crucify Jesus, or Peter like they crucified Jesus. And here's what Peter said, I'm unworthy to die as the same way my Savior died. And so they crucified him upside down. This was their reward for their bold obedience and faith. It's an empowering prayer. It, it, it's an empowering prayer because obedience and boldness almost always trigger spiritual opposition. So don't worry when you face opposition for your obedience and your boldness to God. Worry when you don't. How amazed are people by your boldness. If you know Jesus like I know Jesus, if you've been forgiven like I've been forgiven, man, you want to be bold. This life is the only thing that I have to give back to God for his service and to his service because of all he's done for I've got nothing else but me to give him. And when we do that, and we get to see God do miracles in our life. He releases the miracles in our life. But it always requires faith. It always requires faith. So let your light shine. Don't care if you face opposition because you want others to know the freedom and the grace and the mercy and the love of God's son, Jesus, and what he's done for you and what he's done for me. What would happen? What would happen this week if you prayed, God, make me bold? What could he do in you? What could he do through you?
It's an empowering prayer. God, make this bold. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for who you are. God, we thank you for your, your goodness and your kindness and your grace and your mercy. God, my prayer for each of us this week, more than anything else, is that you would give us boldness. God, there's, there's those in the room that, that you have been impressing on their hearts way before today. Areas of their life that, that you have been calling them to boldness in. God, may today be that day that they say, I'm, I'm not running anymore. God, make me bold. Help me stand. Help me to accomplish all that you have for me. Help me live this life by faith. God, I want to see your miracles. And if that, if that means I have to face some spiritual opposition to get to the other side, God, help me be bold to stand in the midst of that. But God, I want my life to count. I want my life to count. God, make me bold. Maybe you're here today and you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sin and give you eternal life. May today be that day. If you said, Mike, today, I, I want to know him. Because the reality is, is all of us are broken at some point or another. Where God loved you so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to this earth. He died on a cross, and on that cross, he paid for your sin and my sin. They buried him in a tomb. But here's the great news. He didn't stay in that tomb. He rose from the grave, showing that he has the power over sin and power over death and gives us victory in our hearts and our lives today that he can give you victory and freedom as well. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, that's the love of our Savior. And so if you're, you're here today, you say, Mike, today I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to pray, and there's nothing magical with a prayer. It's just simply opening up our hearts to Jesus. But would you pray something like this? Dear Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. Today I turn from my sin. And I invite you to come into my heart and into my life. Today I trust you. And I follow you. All the days of my life. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Would you give God the glory this morning? You said, Mike, today I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. And we would love to hear about your decision and help you grow in your relationship with God. And just in front of you, there's a connection card or around you. Um, if you would fill that out, bring it to Ashley and I. We've got some gifts for you that we just want to uh, bless you with and give you um, to help you begin to grow in your relationship with God. In just a moment, we're going to sing one last song. Um, we're also going to take our offering. Our offering is a time. Um, for us as a church family to give back to God what he has richly blessed us with. And so we would encourage you um, as we as we stand um, to all, also uh, just pray and ask God, God, what is it that you have for me? So would you stand and sing with us?
like to fill out the connection card. It should be in the seat around you. If you have not, please bring it so we have connected. Um, if you would like to learn and get more involved at uh, Renew Church, we have connected class every third Sunday for each Monday or each, hold on, uh, each month after service. <laughs> you can sign up at this website. And also on November 20th, we have baptism. Um, if you would like to go public with your faith, please sign up. There's also a website up here. Um, or you can fill it out on your connection card. So thank you again for coming this weekend. Or, yeah, this weekend. I hope to see you next weekend. Have a great week. Thanks,